everyone and welcome back to Sue Crafting! We are back here. Yes, Sunflower. Watch me jump. Oh, she's so cute. But we are back here at Calf's Dinosaur Research Center, the Jurassic Park Center, in order to contribute to a very special little side quest that I promised Calf I would do. So you see, a little while ago we were adventuring in Tropicraft and I was like, this is curious. There's no fish. There's no manta rays. There's, there's no nothing. What's going on? And it turns out that the Mo Creatures Custom Spawner Mod Edition, oh, there goes a fly, uh, needed to be removed from our mods folders on the server in order for us to find any of the iguanas and tiki heads and awesome fish of Tropicraft. So I was like, sure, no problem. And I yanked it out. And then, we you know, we explored, we had some fun. And then when we came back from Tropicraft, um, well, Kef and I started noticing something interesting. Basically, the whole world became full of insects. They were just everywhere. There were snails and butterflies and all sorts of flies and bumblebees. And it's just nutter butters. And so we realized that by removing that mod, we had flooded the world with insects. So unfortunately today, as part of my agreements with Calf for making up for my mistake, we are going to go around taking care of the insect problem. It's, it's not going to be that pretty. But you see what happens if there's too many of one thing in a population area, like too many populations of crickets in the fields, they eat all the, the wheat and then you have nothing to eat. They eat the crops and there's nothing to eat. So we're going to try to just think of this as not a mass slaughter of bugs, but balancing the ecosystem. It brings up some deep ethical questions like what do you do if you balance an ecosystem on an island that is being decimated, its native population is destroyed due to rats or cats? Do you eliminate the rats or cats? Very questionable ethical questions right there. But Sunflower Darling, thankfully we're not going after rats or cats this time. Um, it's just snails and slugs, which I feel really bad about, and bees. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. So basically, I have to run around smushing the insects. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Because they have, um, they're just, please, just mercy. Have mercy and just, just pass away quickly. Because they are indeed slowing down our area. I think the butterflies are safe from my, my raft. Nope. There it goes. I'm so sorry, little one. But yeah, Calf has said that because of how many insects we have around here, it's almost unplayable. He almost can't get anything done uh, around the dinosaur zoo. So I realized we have to do this as unpleasant as unpleasant as it is. There are hundreds of entities in the area. Um, and they're, they're mostly these bugs. So they're also chewing up the spawn rates. Out of here, out of here, beast. We're also chewing up the spawn rates for all of the other animals. So it's hard to find a really cool tiger or something like that when the whole world is just full of insects. Oh, this is so hard. It's like, I love the snails. Why? Why do I have to do this? Because because it's making it so he can't play, that's why. Oh, it's so hard. And plus, it actually brings up some good questions. So, in real life, often, like, what happens if a locust swarm gets into, like, a farmer's fields? It's gonna destroy everything. Ooh, mushrooms, don't mind if I do. In fact, let's pick some of these. Hey, you, hey, you, you wanna come down? Come here. Come here, pomegranate. Oh, pomegranate. I don't think we have a pomegranate tree yet. Maybe that's something we'll we'll plant when we get back. Is this a pomegranate sapling? I think it's a dragon fruit sapling. Just gonna casually uh, tuck these in here. I'm sure Calf doesn't need those. Ooh, apple sapling. Come here, you. There we go. Alright, I hear another bug. Do you hear it? Where is it? I'm sorry! I'm sorry, Mr. Grasshopper! It's just the way things are. Oh, see? You can you can really get a good idea for how overpopulated the area is in insects as you start looking around. But yes, so, if you have a ton of insects, what do you do? Well, like, some people will use pesticides and things like that. But I was actually reading about how the estimates for world population have gone up by, like, 1 to 2 billion. That's a lot more people by 2050. And I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm going to be alive in 2050, because what am I going to be? Let's see, it's 2014 right now, so it's like 40 more years. Yeah, I'm only going to be in my 60s, so I'll be around, and that'll be a lot of people. And we'll have to feed all those people. That slug crawled into that block to hide from me. I'm sorry, it's a horrific mass slaughter, I know. But it was really interesting reading about the new population estimates, because we can't even feed everyone on the planet right now. There's a lot of income and wealth uh, disparity. A lot of it man-made too, which is just kind of like even more cruel. But that means that we have a lot of people going hungry in a lot of countries. But I read some very interesting 
things about Thailand because in Thailand they're looking for better ways to make sure that everyone especially kids in the countryside who are from traditionally very poor families and very poor communities hello panda you're just kind of chilling out here okay hold still panda I know after the slug I'm sorry slugs I'm so sorry oh I hate this I hate this but they're trying to figure out how to feed children in very poor communities in Thailand. And one of the ways they do that is with insects. Because insects are actually, believe it or not, a fantastic source of protein. And zinc. It turns out a tarantula provides not only... Like, yes, a tarantula. People do eat tarantulas. Um, and really, I'm vegan, so I don't eat any kind of meat. Uh, and once you don't for a while, all... all eating kind of becomes kind of weird. You're like, really? People eat that? I'm so sorry, dragonflies. Hold still, hold still, hold still. I'm sorry. Oh, I can't bring myself to kill the Luna Moth. It's too hard. But yeah, so like all eating is kind of suspect and culturally backed because in some cultures, what other cultures eat is like really disgusting and you're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe that those people actually consume that. And you feel like for me, I've, you start feeling the same way towards me after a while, uh, even though like, and I'm also a biologist. So that's kind of, oh no, sheep, sheep move. You're being poisoned. I'll get rid of this stuff for you. You don't worry. See, we're trying to help out. This is all to balance the ecosystem. But yeah, so a lot of what we eat is culturally determined. So what some people think is really, really gross, other people think is delicious. And what some people think is, uh, like, wrong. Like, when I was taking my class on Korea, in Korea, dog is just considered another type of cattle. And yet, if you tell people in the U.S. that, yeah, you can eat dog burger or dog, dog jerky, uh, people are gonna flip, <laughs> you know, they're gonna get like violent defending angry because they they know dogs They personally know dogs and they like dogs and that just seems very wrong to them But in Korea, it's it's often not a big deal cat is a big deal cat is family. You don't eat cat What are you doing? But dog dog is often just like it's like a cow. Yeah, it's smart Yeah, it can it can be kind of entertaining But it's meat is good for you and you should eat it if there's like a bunch of stray dogs so yeah, my, my Korean instructor would explain like, yeah, in the winter my dad just goes out and he finds some some of those stray dogs that occupy all the city alleys and streets and he'll bring home dog for dinner. And it's just a thing that you do. I really can't bring myself to kill the butterflies. I'm sorry, calf. I'm doing my best. I see that, I see that little bug go out of here. There we go. We're doing a pretty good job. We're starting to clean up quite a few of the bugs. I know most of them are actually, I can't bring myself to get the butterflies. I know most of them are actually over in the uh, jungle biome, so we'll work our way that way. Got the bee, got the little, got the little dude. So sorry, little dude. Ooh, what are these, papaya? I could use some papaya. But yeah, so it really just depends on what country you're in, what culture you're a part of that determines what you eat and why. Um, and I thought that was super interesting when I was reading these articles about eating insects. Because if you're looking at it just from a logic point of view, eating insects makes a ton of sense. It's very high in protein, and what's more, they're really wonderful and very easy uh, to to get like a lot of protein from a small amount of area. You could take like this this small area and raise ten thousand crickets. Whereas if you had to raise like a cow, you can't get as much return from a cow as you can from crickets in terms of protein and food source. So, my dear sunflower, it makes a lot of sense to me to eat insects. If you're going to eat meat, then why not do it in like a very practical, sustainable way and that can feed the most people for the least amount of input. That's just something that, especially given my university background, you learn is is critical to think about. It sounds like really weird to a lot of people, especially younger people I've noticed, to have to think that there isn't enough food. And I grew up in a family where there wasn't enough food, so you know the reality. And there is that idea of like, oh well you can't eat insects, but when you're hungry, you eat whatever you can are offered. But I I don't know. I think that it's a smart a smart way to go. So a lot of people are putting more time and research and effort into it and holy moly. I think Calf's growing some some jungle trees here for some reason. I'm just gonna casually, hello there. Hello there, fruit. I actually have heard that the guys here 
are starving and very hungry. So it occurred to me that we can try out this cooking and eating with insects thing by turning all of the insects we're gathering into some food for Calf and his friend. Hey, 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 hey. That's right, little bee. All right, I'll put the little... Come back here, jungle sapling. I need to put you back down so one day you can grow into a tall, beautiful jungle tree like these guys. Oh my gosh, look at that bamboo! It has grown so much! So would you guys eat insects? I probably would. Like, if I if I had to choose, like, a protein source, I'd feel less guilty about nomming that, that cricket there than I would a cow or a chicken. I love chickens! But, um, like, less, less the ethics or the guilt question, it just is practical. It makes sense to me. Sunflower, darling, it is night. Get inside here. I think the insects will come out better at night, though. It might be easier to spot them. We'll have to see. But, yeah, so that's this. I really appreciated, like, learning everything that I did. They make great protein sources. Uh, they can vastly... <sighs> They can vastly produce far more meat and food for people, especially people who need the food, than... Oh, there's another one. I got you, little maggot. Oh my goodness, I can't believe we almost have two stacks of slime just from this. Oh, I have noticed. Wow, see what I mean? It's like an infestation here. We've got to take care of it. Get out of here, dragonfly. No dragonfly. No fly for the dragonfly. Get out of here, maggots. I'm sorry, maggots. This is no fly, no fly insect zone. Nope. I promised Cap I would remove as many of you as possible. I'm gonna turn you into burgers, and then he and his friend will have something to eat. Wait, wait, wait. There's that. They really like climbing on this bamboo too. Oh, I can't believe I'm taking it. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, insects. I'm sorry. Oh, it's so hard. I feel like such a, a like conflicted person, but again, and we we took down some of the bamboo, so I need to like there we go, grow some of the bamboo again. Is that the only kind of bamboo? I think there's two types, and I'm putting down the wrong type. Let's throw out the lily of the valley. Yeah, the asper bamboo. Put that stuff down, and then hunt down more insects. But yeah, so like the way that people in Thailand, especially they like roast them, fry them, turn them into patties, like you can turn them into tortillas. Um, it was it was really interesting. And deep fried scorpion is apparently a big thing that a lot of people enjoy quite a bit. Deep fried scorpion. My dad would hate that. He hates scorpions. Like they're one of the few things that he truly finds uh, somewhat terrifying. Also, watch out for the quicksand. I always have to keep an eye out for the quicksand. Hey. Any, any bugs hiding in the tall grasses? But it really was so sustainable. In the documentary I watched about how Thailand handles um, its insects and what it does with them, they were, they were really on top of it. Hey, silver skeleton. Hey, rat. You guys can both back off. Like, rat. Why don't more people eat rat? It's a meat. Very interesting questions. I really, really did enjoy learning what I did. And like the kids who went to this school... Oh, there you are, you little jerk. You came around from behind, eh? I'm busy hunting down... hunting down these bugs. I don't have time for you. We're actually getting quite a few bugs. I think this will help calf out quite a bit. Also, I'm gonna trim the bamboo. <laughs> the bugs actually hide in the bamboo and the bamboo grows so fast. It's so ridiculously fast. But yeah, see, like these crickets in the documentary, uh, the kids who went to this school in Thailand, one of their responsibilities... What is going over here? Where is this light source coming from? Where is this mysterious light source? Is it this grass? No. Fascinating. I hear bugs. I hear bugs dying. There's a bug. Come here! Oh, here's more bugs in a big in a big crowd around these bamboo. Alright, get out of here, you. That's right, get out of here. Nope, 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 nope. Come back. Come back, Mr. B. Drat. Well, we're doing our best. It's really hard to, like, track down some of these guys. And cutting the bamboo helps a little bit. It'll grow back super fast, but it keeps the insects from climbing them, and then we don't lose track of them. Oh, there's another one. I'm sorry, butterfly. Oh. You're a good pollinator. You're also an entity, and that's lagging the server down. Oh, whoop. Unexpected scorpion attack, help! 
But yeah, the kids would, uh, as part of their homework, they not only had to do like normal homework, like reading and writing, but one of their projects was to catch a whole bunch of crickets. So every night, these kids in this village would go out and catch a whole bunch of crickets, which would then be put into the school's food the next day. And it gave the kids far more protein than they could even hope to get otherwise. They wouldn't be able to have enough food. They would be malnourished and they would be very sick if they weren't able to eat these insects. So they worked as a group. Found you. They worked as a group to catch a whole bunch of them. And so every morning you turned in your homework and you turned in your bag of crickets. And then the crickets got turned into this really actually kind of yummy looking stir fry. Aha that uh, everyone ate for lunch. And it was really cool because the kids had options of getting seconds because they were able to all contribute to the community pot. So there was enough food for like seconds. And that day they had ice cream available, like ice cream, which you think like, oh, all the kids are gonna wanna get extra ice cream. And actually a ton of the kids really wanted extra crickets. And they said how it made them feel nice and healthy. And then they went to another village and they talked about how the kids in this village uh, collected tarantulas and it was kind of a dangerous job because the tarantulas could actually paralyze you and sometimes they could even kill you because if you got bit by these tarantulas and the bite had what no bad 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 grass bad we better eat something so we don't like pass out and die but yeah the tarantula um venom can actually make your heart stop if you get paralyzed enough and so these kids would risk getting bit by this like poison venomous tarantula so that they could catch it but it was worth a lot like they could then sell the tarantulas and the the crickets and other insects that they got out of their family's farm fields to people who would buy them uh for the thailand food markets so it was really interesting how they're able to take what we consider a, a pest that destroys a lot of farmland and crops. Aha, uh -huh, I, I knew you were hiding up there. Get down here. See, they climb up the bamboo and hide up the top of it. But they were able to take these things that we consider pests and turn it, like these crickets, and turn it into food uh, and money for their families. And it turns out that Thailand has such an appetite for insects that it's a huge business. It's a big business to sell, catch, and like breed crickets and things like that for food. And it's also really easy because unlike, what, where are you? Get out of here, little plant. Unlike a lot of like chicken or cattle, cattle is especially very resource intensive. You need a lot of grain. You need a lot of water. You need a lot of space, if you like at least humanely raising the cattle, to have like cattle as food. And it takes a lot. Like the one hamburger that you eat uses uh, far more resources than it, like you getting calories out of it. So it was really interesting to see how these people, these whole communities are able to survive by just putting like their leftovers from the night before into the cricket tins and the crickets can take the waste and, and very like very reasonably convert it into a better type of energy uh, that's edible. So it was very self-sustainable. I really liked it. So I think the future is eating insects. Don't know if I'll participate. Like I said, I'm like not that I don't I'm not a picky eater. I'm vegan for a lot of like ethical reasons and a vegan biologist, <laughs> which I know how how the food cycle works. I know how the food cycle works. I know how nutrition works. I know how uh, the vicious life cycle works and that you know everything everything eats everything else at some level. But being a vegan biologist is an interesting position to, to be at, and it's just where I'm happy. There we go. Get out of here. Get out of here, little guys. And, I mean, I still feed my animals what they need to eat, but I have the choice not to have to eat those things, so I don't. Hey! Hey! Oh! Hey! 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 You're almost as bad as the, as the maggots, sir. Whew. I think we've removed a lot, actually. We've gotten, like, at least... Yeah, we've almost got two stacks of slime balls. So I can report to Calf. Hey, Amp! I can report to Calf that, oh man, I, if I die because I stepped on a poisonous plant, that'll be so embarrassing. So embarrassing. Oh, I, I need to eat some more so we don't die. But yeah, I think I can report to Calf now that, whoop, well, some insect's dying somewhere. Oh! Hey! Get away! 
I wonder where the, the those guys are coming from. I'm keeping all of the slime balls we've collected as evidence that we have come and we have done our duty. And like I said, I think I'm going to make some of these guys into different types of foods for Calf and his friend. Where'd he go? Get out of that tree! Get out of the bamboo! No! I'm sorry! I know there need to be lots of insects in the jungle. But I think that what we just did there is significantly going to help. What is this? Ooh, a coconut sapling! I don't mind if I do. Alright, let's take out these maggots. Hey, out of here. And then I feel pretty good about it. I think that we helped reduce quite a few entities. But yeah, would you guys eat insects? Uh, is it just the gross ick factor? Which is like kind of a cultural thing? Is it like an ethical factor? Because like most of you are young enough, you're going to be the ones who have to deal <laughs> with the fact that there's not enough food to feed everybody. I don't think it'll be too dramatic either. I think it's just going to be just like... Like it always is. There's enough food of any type for the people who have the money. And there just won't be enough food for the people who don't. So I think that's that's more what the future is. So, you know, when people go, oh, no, there's not going to be enough. We're all going to die. I don't think it'll be like that. It'll just be the poor people die, which sounds horrible. But it's how the world works right now and how I think it would in the future, too. Goodness, I think we did it. I think we did it. Like, we removed a lot. I think Calf will be able to be uh, much happier with the number uh, of insects that are left. See, they hide in the bamboo. So I think this will make Calf much happier. And like I said, since we've been talking about eating insects, and I've heard that the boys here are hungry, we'll cook them up some, some yummy insect grub. So I'll show that off to you guys in just a second. Just gotta take out a couple more flies. And then we will head back home. Home, home, home. I'm so excited to go home, yay! All right. Hey there, Calf. We stopped by, well I should say Sunflower. Sunflower and I stopped by again to check in on how the insect issue was going, going around Jurassic Park. Clearly, clearly there was quite the, oh what do you call it when, quite the swarm of insects roaming around, but I am happy to say that we handled quite a few of them. Quite a few of them. Uh, on a side note, I have been experimenting with some new protein packed recipes that I think you will enjoy. Please let me know how, let me know, let's see. They, please let me know how they taste. Yours truly, Zookeeper. Siri. There we go. Um, bug bites. There. All right, so this is what we have prepared for Calf. I have made a little note letting him know that we have taken care of his bug problem around the Jurassic Park. We have left a good quantity of slime balls as evidence. I'm keeping two stacks of them because that's a lot of slime balls. As evidence of our hard work. Left some bamboo because why the heck not. And I have prepared three separate delicious protein and insect packed meals for him. The exoskeleton crunch cookies, the crunchy cricket burger, and the squishy grub soup. So I'm hoping Calf will enjoy and hopefully he won't have an insect problem for a while. And you know, maybe if he does have an insect problem, he can think of it in a new new light as future food, the future of the world's food resources, bugs. Oh hey, and then just as I was about to pull out Sunflower and hop on her, I noticed something. There's a little sign right here. It says, to the person who gave us all these fossils a present, because I spread the fossils around. I wonder if that was Kath or it was his new assistant, who I have yet to be introduced to, who uh, has left me this little thing. What's this? What's this right here, huh? What's this? Ooh, look at this. Oh, beautiful diamonds and sugar cane and a plant fossil and a safari net launcher. Ooh, and a lovely magic case lining. They know how to speak to me. They have seeds. They have flowers. Pineapples. Kiwi. Ah, oh, these, these are some guys who know what, what I love, what, what matters to my heart. So I'm going to, like, find somewhere to stuff all of these things. I think I'm going to have to get Sunflower out. Hello, darling. 
I need to see. There we go. Thankfully, she still has a little bit of room, a little bit, left inside of her pack. So I'm just going to collect all these nice little presents, and hopefully they'll enjoy the delicious cricket burgers that we left them. I hope they don't have anything against eating insects, Sunflower, because that would just that would just be a bummer. But yeah, you guys, make sure you're watching and seeing what's going on, because uh, Kaff and, and this new mystery man that has joined him to assist in the Jurassic Park Zoo, they're doing quite a bit, and I'm excited to pop over some more to do more with them. All right, well, let's head out home, Sunflower. It's time to go home and try to get our wonderful little pickaxe so that we can get that Terraburn DNA! Yay!